Hi, this is Andrew for Geek News Central, and on the desk this afternoon we have the OnePlus 8 Pro. It's back for a kind of in-depth review to look at the display settings for the 120Hz fluid display. Now OnePlus make a great deal of this, this fluid display and it's undoubtedly a lovely screen, absolutely fabulous. So what I wanted to do was actually to look at some of the customizations or some of the settings that end users can play with to make sure that they get the best from that display. So let's take a look. As you can expect, the display settings, as for almost any Android phone, are in the uh, settings uh, icon or whatever, app or whatever you want to call it. So let's pop in. And what we'll do is we'll just go through them in, in order. Um, so it does mean we'll jump about a wee bit, but it's probably just the most logical way of doing it. Adaptive brightness, this has been around forever. It doesn't need much explanation. What it does is that it makes the phone bright when the outside environment is bright, so you can still see the screen. And then it dims the screen on the phone when you perhaps come into a dark environment, say when you come inside, so that the, the phone doesn't appear to be super bright. There's what I think is a new feature, I haven't seen it before, called comfort tone. And from what I understand, doing a little bit of research about this is that it tries to adjust the screen color just so that um, the screens or the, 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 if you like, the whiteness of the display kind of fits in with the environment you're in. So if you're in a very uh, bluish white area, then the screen takes on a bluish tone. But if you're on a, um, if you're in a kind of warm environment where there's more of a reddish tone to the white, then it takes on a, a reddish tone too. That's what my understanding of it is. I can't say I've noticed it happen a great deal, but it's there and you can have a tinker with it. So sleep, I think we've all know what the sleep does. It sends the screen to sleep after a certain number of minutes of activity. Again, a feature that Android's had for years. But here we have advanced, and this is really where some of the new stuff is happening with the OnePlus 8 Pro. And if we have a look in here, we've got about, really there's three key ones um, and two others. So if we just again go through them, screen calibration, you can choose how you like your color, if you like. So you can choose, go for a vivid color. And if you watch, when I switch it to natural, you perhaps just see the, the, the whiteness here takes a slightly, perhaps a warmer tone to it. And you can kind of see the blue in the background changes there. And I've just toggled between the tones, you can probably just see them flicking ever slightly. If you're a pro user, you can go for advanced and there's a whole load of stuff that you can fiddle with. Um, you can choose what kind of gamut you want, whether you want the, this AMOLED wide gamut, or you can go for sRGB or Display P3. They probably won't make much sense to you unless you're a, a, you know, a real color aficionado. And of course you can just adjust it. And as you can see here, it takes on bluer tones as we go to cold, and it takes on reddisher tones as we go to warm. So I'm gonna just leave it on vivid. Okay, so if we go back to resolution, so the OnePlus 8 Pro, it is a QHD plus display, which has a maximum resolution, or rather has a, a res, uh, what do you call it? a native resolution of 3,168 by 1,440 pixels. So that's the QHD plus. You can also have FHD plus, which I'm guessing is full HD or something like this. I can't remember what the Q is, but it's, oops, let me just cancel that for a second. It has a resolution of 2,376 by 1080, as they would say. So you might want to choose the 1080 if you have a particular video, a particular material that is designed to be played at 1080. Now you can switch between the two of them. So um, it can sometimes cause, according to this, it can cause problems with the some of the, I don't know why, let's see, let's switched it over. Of course, with some apps, I haven't encountered any problems. But if I go back to QHD Plus and switch it again, that's it. You do actually have some settings. Uh, when you have them in QHD Plus, you can actually get it to switch between the two on the fly. Um, so this will help with battery life because the QHD Plus resolution does take a little bit more battery. So that's the resolution. We've also got the refresh rate. As I said earlier, the 120 hertz frequency refresh. It's the big thing to do with this fluid display, but if you want to improve your battery life, you can toggle it back down to 60 hertz and uh, you'll get a bit of, a, of an extended battery life. 
I've no idea what that effective extension in battery life is. It'll probably depend on the apps you're using and things like that. So I've been running on 120 hertz. And then we've got some two settings really to do with the camera. If you don't, you can just see the, the little camera, getting some email messages. The, um, the camera's just up here, a little one of those uh, hole punch cameras. You can set it so that you get that full screen and in some instances you will see the black hole. In other instances, you can reduce the effective height of the screen so that you don't see the front camera. But if there are some apps that you want to display in full screen, you can go in here and you can actually set those as uh, full screen apps. So that's the advanced things. You've got your screen, screen calibration for your color. You've got your resolution. Do you want FHD or QHD? And you've got your refresh rate. Um, and then you've got the stuff to do with the, the camera itself. Again, we've got another color effect here. Uh, where you've got this vibrant color effect, you can get photographs and things to appear that bit richer. Um, you can, you know, again, this is your personal preference. I've got a lot of these thing, things turned on just because I'm testing them. You may find that over time you prefer uh, the less vibrant color. Who knows? Motion graphic smoothing. So, depending on your point of view, this is either um, a great invention or it's an abomination. So, what this does is as many of you will know, when you take video, uh, you typically take it at, and I'll try and get this right, 25 frames per second in Europe, or it's 30 frames per second in America. And that can sometimes be upscaled to, um, to obviously to 50 frames per second or to 60 frames per second. Now, when it does kind of that, up upscaling is perhaps the wrong word, what you effectively have is interpolation. So it looks at every, if every frame and kind of tries to guess what that intermediate frame might look like had you been recording at a higher frame rate. As I say, there's a bit of controversy about that. Some people don't like it. Um, so really OnePlus made the best decision so that if you want to try and get this motion smoothing so you can take advantage perhaps of the fluid display at 120 hertz, you can turn that feature on. If you don't like that feature, you can turn it off. It's entirely up to your, up to you. So we've got a couple of other things that we'll just talk about here. We've got night mode and reading mode. Night mode, I'm sure many people will be familiar with. It's been around for a little while. And what it does is that it just tries to bring on a, um, a warmer tone to the screen. You know, there's been some feelings that the blueness of uh, LED screens is disrupting people's um, sleep patterns. Um, so this bringing this warmer tone to the display is intended to help that. And you can adjust the the warmth and the brightness to suit your own preferences. Better turn that back off again. Now, a new feature that I haven't really seen before is called reading mode. It's quite interesting in that it tries to, to a certain extent, get the AMOLED screen to reproduce the behavior almost of the e-ink style paper from an e-reader. So what you can do is you can turn on reading mode and it takes a lot of the color out of the screen. So you've really got two choice choices, you've got what's called a chromatic effect, which if you kind of look at the two pictures that I've got here, it tries to take a lot of the color out, but it doesn't take it out completely. You can kind of still see a few hints of perhaps of the yellows of the, of the flowers. So if I take that back off, you can kind of see the yellows and the flowers. Yeah. But if I choose to have the mono effect, then when I turn the feature on, you'll really see that everything goes to being effectively monochromatic. It's all black and white, as you might say. So I think that's a nice little feature if you're used to using e-readers and uh, you uh, want to reproduce that effect, then you've got that option there on the 8 Pro. Sorry, I need to turn that back off. Yeah, that's better. Okay, a couple of other features that, you know, these aren't new to the 8 Pro. These have been around for a while. So you've got your ambient display. So this is kind of uh, the feature that shows you notifications and messages and that kind of stuff when your phone is still locked. So in this instance, you really have to pick up the phone to show it, um, or you can tap the screen to show it. Uh, and the one thing that's probably of interest really with the 8 Pro and because of the curved screen, you've got what's called a horizon light. So that's basically down the side here, you can get it to uh, 
put notifications if you're not particular, but give you an indication that you that there is a notification through the use of various colors. So you can choose whichever color you want. I had it on purple and effectively down the side here will glow when the phone's upside down uh, to tell you that you've got a notification. Okay. So the rest of the stuff probably isn't of any great interest. Things like the font size, display size, the status bar, they'll all be things that people are familiar with from, the, uh, from the other ver versions of Android and other OnePlus phones. So that's it. We've had a quick run through the display settings. Uh, so you now have a better idea of what you can tweak to get the most from the fluid display on the OnePlus 8 Pro. This is Andrew for Geek News Central. Thanks very much.